This is a review of the KJV Sword Study Bible in both the giant print and large print personal size editions. This is the brand new, all new KJV Sword Study Bible with the updated cover and updated binding options. And of course, once again, available in two separate sizes, the giant print and the large print personal size. We're gonna see that this uh, Sword Study Bible contains many unique features, including the complete red letter edition text, not just the words of Christ in red in the New Testament, but complete red letter text for the spoken words of God throughout the entire Bible. Uh, also includes the very unique marginal study system and margin reference and margin study guide that we're also gonna take a look at. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to take a closer look at the KJV Sword Study Bible Giant Print and Large Print Personal Size Editions. So here is the KJV Sword Study Bible from, of course, the KJV store. And we're seeing the updated packaging. It's kind of the green box here. KJV Sword Study Bible, Red Letter, Old and New Testament, Margin Study Guide, Book Summaries and Study Aids, Top Concordance. We see specifically that this is the, the new Giant Print in the black ultra soft edition, um, which of course we're taking a look here. This is the ultra soft cover. So it's kind of a synthetic cover, kind of similar to what you might see in like a vinyl cover, something like that that you might call it. Um, the other one is going to be this KJV Sword Study Bible large print personal size. So here kind of side by side, you can see the difference in size there. Uh, if you put these one on top of the other, of course that's the, that's the large print personal size on the top. Um, that's a genuine leather burgundy cover and the main thing you're seeing is that the updated cover design So rather than the really large sword instead you're getting this vertical sword here in between the Holy Bible uh, Same thing here on the genuine leather burgundy on the large print personal size <clears throat> So we're gonna see that this giant print edition It essentially replaces the old large print edition which had the much larger sword across the cover um, basically just updated there um, so now we're seeing the two sizes. So this giant print is still the full size one. It features a size 15 font, whereas this large print personal size, it's still actually considered a large print as well. It's a size 12 font. So on the spine there, Holy Bible, KJV, we see red letter, Old Testament and New Testament and Whitaker House, which again, that red letter, Old Testament and New Testament, uh, we know that that's talking about the complete red letter edition which we will get into and we will cover the difference between that and traditional Words of Christ in red. So once again, here's the packaging as well for the large print, personal size, burgundy genuine leather. Uh, so we're gonna see that in size, you know, it, basically the size differs on these two, but uh, other than the size, these Bibles are exactly the same in their content and everything once you get to the inside of these Bibles is exactly the same, contains all the same Sword Study Bible features. To get an even clearer picture of how these KJV Sword Study Bibles have the exact same internal, uh, the exact same pagination features and things on the inside, here is the giant print edition on the left. There's the pagination of Genesis chapter one. And then here we have that large print personal size on the right. Uh, so you see everything the same. The G4 starting on Genesis chapter 1, uh, the G4 starting on Genesis chapter 1 in the large print personal size edition. And the video uh, does certainly zoom in a little bit there, uh, but even on this large print personal size edition, which is a very handy size at only about 6 by 8 inches, still has a size 12 font, still very readable, still has the complete red letter text, Really, either one of them is a great purchase, a great value, depending on the size of the print and the size of the Bible that you prefer in your KJV Sword Study Bible. So looking here again at this Ultra Soft Edition, which uh, is kind of a less expensive edition, not quite as expensive as the Genuine Leather, we'll see that it's actually a really nice Bible. Um, it's actually extremely flexible. Um, this Bible certainly will lay flat when open. Um, this is brand new out of the box. That's the ultra soft edition. Of course, the uh, genuine leather here on the large print personal size, uh, also very nice. It's got a nice grain of leather. Um, looks really sharp with the gold on the front there, the Holy Bible and that vertical sword logo, uh, which of course uh, goes along with the sword study Bible. Um, so we're gonna get into uh, this sword study Bible. We're gonna use the giant print so that the print's a little easier to see the text and the features on this video. Uh, and we're gonna get into uh, these features right away. So the first thing we see in this KJV Source Study Bible Giant Print Edition is gonna be the presentation page. 
uh, which we're going to see here where you can put your name inside of that. We'll give it as a gift. And then you're going to see a brief listing of the features of the KJV Sword Study Bible, that it's red letter, giant prints, a special margin edition, that it indicates the Hebrew names of God, uh, that it has special word meanings, uh, that it's a complete red letter edition, and it talks about the margin study guide, all of which we'll get into in depth. One thing I really like, though, about these sword study Bibles, uh, now that Whitaker House has taken over the publishing, which you'll see their logo, logo down there, um, is that they actually list out the ISBN and all the available options of their KJV Sword Study Bible giant print. So again, here we're looking at the ultra soft black, as we know, uh, but you can see all of the available options, which you'll find every single one of those on our website on the KJV store. Uh, we tend to kind of separate them out by the solid colors versus the two-tone ones, like the black and tan and the blacks and grays. And if we look here at the large print personal size edition, it does the same thing. KJV Sword Study Bible large print personal size. And we know that it has all the available options there, which are also on our website. And this specifically is the Genuine Leather Burgundy Edition right there, ending in 5092. Another thing worth mentioning on the packaging here, if you look on the back of the box of the KJV Sword Study Bible, very unique thing here showing this word-for-word -word initiative from Whitaker House saying that with every word-for-word -word Bible purchased, Whitaker House will donate a Bible to someone in need. Uh, that's a pretty cool feature so that you know when you purchase one of these sword study Bibles, you're also helping to donate a Bible to someone else. So as we keep it moving here from the listing of all the KJV Sword Study Bible giant print editions, uh, we get to the contents, um, which of course has a, a quick listing there. Uh, there's an introduction. We're not going to read too much of that. It does talk about some of the history of the King James Version Bible, which is very unique. Um, but we're going to see here that this talks about how that this is a red letter edition, uh, that the KJV Source Study Bible is the complete red letter edition, uh, that the red lettering in this Bible is if, as first and that it has been done throughout the, both the Old and New Testaments. And it says, while the publisher believes firmly that all the Bible is God's word, uh, and is therefore inerrant, see 2 Timothy 3.16, the highlighting of Christ's words in the New Testament has proven to be a special help and blessing to countless readers of Scripture. Now, the KJV Sword Study Bible utilizes red type to highlight the direct words of God throughout the entire Old Testament, and it is hoped that this added emphasis will add blessing and clarity to Old Testament devotional reading and study. After the introduction, we get a basic outline of Old Testament history, uh, then we begin the section on the names and attributes of God, which we're going to get back to. It's a section on definitions of biblical terms little used today. Then we get to the all-important scripture theme study guide, which again is the exact same as the previous sword study Bible edition. Remember, God, plan, and man. G for God, P for plan, M for man. And we see on the next page here, um, it has been asked as to how to use the marking, the margin markings. It says, first determine the subject that you want to study. See Roman numeral page 25, which we'll take a look at. When you have determined the subject you wish to study, refer to the first number under the, that particular subject and turn to that page. After you've read the verse or verses involved, the line, whether it be a red line, a solid black line, or a black dotted line, will have a number at the end of it. This number refers you to the next page on which the verse covers that same subject. It says to turn to that page and uh, finding the subject symbol GPM, God, plan, man, as we said, etc. Read the verse or verses and again you will note that at the end of the margin marking there will be another number that is the next page in the sequence of your study to cover your subject matter. So here we are at the beginning page of the explanation of God, plan, and man. And you see the division there on the page. And specifically, we're looking at Roman numeral number 25, uh, which the explanation here on Roman numeral 24 told us to do. So G for God, that column is God. P for plan, that column is plan. And then M for man. And specifically, we're going to pay close attention to G4, where it says God, Son, and Jesus. Let's remember that G4 reference as we get further into the study. And remember, we're not even to Genesis yet. We're still at the introductory features of the KJV Sword Study Bible. As we turn a few more pages here, we're starting to see the listing of all of the available references and scripture references in these various marginal study sections and the margin study guide and the margin study references. So I'm down here on Roman numeral page 29, and we see again the G4, God, Son, and Jesus. 
and then look at all of the scripture references that it's giving. That's only the first column. Here is three more columns of scripture. Um, this first block here is only about 18 different examples, starting with Genesis 1-1 and going all the way through Judges 2-1 through 3 on page 388. So we know we're getting, as it says at the top of the page there, the book, the book of Genesis, the chapter and verse, and then the page number. So Genesis 1-1 is on page 3, and it's going to go through to Judges 2-1 through 3 on page 388. Let's also pay special attention and notice that there's Isaiah 7.14, um, about 60 or so references on this one column. Uh, we're going to see over here, uh, here is John chapter 1, verse 1. And let's remember those as we get further into the Sword Study Bible and take a look at this marginal study system. As we get to the end of all the God, plan, and man marginal study references in the marginal study system, we finally make our way to the Old Testament. Uh, and we see here that there's going to be an outline on the book of Genesis. There's an outline for every book of the Bible. Um, but specifically, uh, as we see the survey there and the author, we get to eventually Genesis. And of course, the first book of Moses called commonly called Genesis. And we see up there that the in the box that it's beginnings of the universe and of God's people. As we pan out here, again, notice that there is both black and red text there in Genesis chapter 1. And that specifically on Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, the let there be light is in red. That's an example of God speaking. That's an example of that complete red letter edition, which is completely unique to the KJV Sword Study Bible, giant print and large print editions. I don't know of another Bible that actually does that. Uh, but again, we're going to get into here Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and notice this the first instance uh, and that first reference of that G4. So that's a G4-4. Genesis chapter 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We see that the word God is underlined. Uh, we also see several things here. Acts chapter 17, 24, we know that that is a cross reference. John 1, 1 is going to be a cross reference. And then we see the word Elohim. So we see that Acts chapter 17 and verse number 24 was the cross reference from Genesis 1, 1, the first one listed. Uh, and we see here that it says that God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. The second cross reference from Genesis 1, 1 was John chapter 1 and verse 1. And we're going to see that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And actually, we're going to see that G4 reference. Keep in mind that we saw that G4 here in John chapter 1, verse 1, the cross-reference of Genesis 1-1, both talking about beginnings. So back here again in Genesis 1-1, again, we know that that word God is underlined, and we see at the end that it mentions that word Elohim. We're going to see that one of the major features of the KJV Sword Study Bible is defining the Hebrew names of God and also using underlined words, which are going to basically provide an alternate word or explanation of a difficult word in the King James Version text. So we get here to the section on the names and attributes of God, and we see that number three, there we go, as we just saw in Genesis 1-1, is Elohim which means the Almighty, and it says that Elohim is a plural form of Eloah, occurring about 2,500 times, and it is first used in Genesis 1.1. So now we see that explanation of Elohim. We know that that mentioning of God in Genesis 1.1 is Elohim, the Almighty, uh, and that it's used 2,500 times throughout the Bible. So tying it all together, we get back here to Genesis 1.1. Uh, we saw that that underlined word God is Elohim. We know now Elohim as a Hebrew name of God is the Almighty. Uh, from the special section at the beginning of the Sword Bible, we saw the cross-references of Acts 17.24 and John 1.1. 1, 1. Now we're going to focus on the marginal study system, which again, G4, we know is God, Son, and Man. And again, we know that at the end of that dash, that four is saying to turn to page number four. Genesis one, as we see at the top of the page here, is page number three. So we're gonna go to page four and look for the next instance of G4. Here's page four in the KJV Sword Study Bible. And we see specifically down here in Genesis 1, there is that G4 again. There's a G4 and we're gonna see a dash six 
And we see here it says that, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And we're going to see here that the uh, dominion is to have rule or authority over something. That's that underlined word and definition. And once again, the G4, we're seeing the next page example is number six. Page six in the KJV Sword Study Bible, looking again for that marginal reference of G4. And we see it down here at Genesis chapter three and verse number 15. And it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And the G4 reference, the next one is showing is page number 80. Page number 80 takes us to Genesis 49. And we can see here in the margin that the G4 is Genesis 49 and verse 10. And it says that the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So we're still seeing the cross references. And then we're seeing that the definition of gathering is obedience. And here out in the margin, the next G4 page number is page number 93. Page 93 takes us to Exodus chapter 6. And we see that the G4 reference is here under Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And it says, And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known. So once again, we're seeing God Almighty. We're also seeing Jehovah. Uh, we see El Shaddai and Lord or Yahweh. And we're also going to be able to see those explanations in the beginning of this Bible, which talks about the Hebrew names of God. So here in the names and attributes of God, we're going to see that number four, there is that example of Jehovah. Jehovah he is, and it says the self-existing one. It says that this is the most frequently used name about 6,000 times and is gen generally translated as the Lord and only occasionally as Jehovah. Here on Roman number two, we see the compound names of God, and we're specifically seeing number 10 is there's El Shaddai, which we just saw. El Shaddai, Shaddai translated the Almighty God, or God Almighty, or the Almighty, meaning God is the all-powerful one. So we're back in Exodus 6, verse 3. We just saw about Jehovah. We just saw about the explanation of El Shaddai. And let's continue on with that marginal study system and the reference of G4 with the next page number being 116. Here we see on page 116, that's Exodus 20. In their chapter 20, we're going to see the G4 reference out here in the margin of Exodus 20, verse 11. And it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And we see the next marginal reference to G4. The page number is 139. Page 139 takes us to Exodus chapter 33. The G4 actually is going to start the very last verse on the page, which is Exodus 33, 17, saying, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And we see the next example is First number is page number 140, and it actually continues on here. We're not going to read all these verses, but we're still here in Exodus chapter 33, and we see that G4 going all the way down to the end of Exodus chapter 33, and with the next reference being page number 141. So we go over here to page 141. Uh, the next instance of G4 is Exodus 34 and verse number 14. It says, For thou shalt worship no other god for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, uh, is a jealous God. And see there that G4, the next marginal reference page number, is going to be 166. So page 166 takes us to Leviticus chapter 8, and we see the G4 reference down here in Leviticus chapter 8, verse 7. And we're going to see that actually goes all the way through verse number 9 on the next page, page 167. Uh, but I wanted to read verse number 7 here, and saying that, And he put upon him the coat, and girded him with the girdle, and clothed him with the robe, and put the ephod, E-P-H-O-D, upon him, and he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod, and bound it unto him therewith. Uh, so this is a good example of those underlined words giving definitions. Ephod, we're going to see here that, okay, that's actually talking about a priestly robe, and that the curious girdle is specifically saying an artistic band. 
As we get over here to the G4 marginal reference and continue on, we're going to see that the next page number is page number 241. Page 241 takes us to Numbers chapter 16, and we see the G4 reference, which we know is God, Son, and Jesus. And we see verse number 41, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Again, G4, God, Son, Jesus. We're following the theme. We're following the marginal reference. And the next example is page 257. Page 257 is the end of Numbers chapter 24, and there's the G4 reference on Numbers 2417, saying, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not near. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall arise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. Once again, going with the theme, and this is basically a verse that's prophesying here. We're seeing the power of the marginal reference and all these references that is, that is propelling us through on God, Son, and Jesus, the topic of G4. And the next page is 293. Page 293 takes us to De Deuteronomy chapter 6. There's the G4 reference here next to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Great verse. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Once again, sticking with that theme, and it says the next reference is page number 305. Page 305 is Deuteronomy chapter 13, and we see the G4 reference next to De Deuteronomy chapter 13 in verse number 3 and 4, and it says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. And then the next page number is going to be number 313. Page 313, we're still in the book of Deuteronomy, and this is chapter 18. We find the G4 reference here on Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, and it says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Then we see page number 335. Page 35 takes us to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And we see the marginal reference here at Deuteronomy 32 verse 18. And it says, Of the rock that begat thee, Thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Then we see page number 348. Page 348 on the G4 marginal reference is Joshua chapter 6, and we're going to see actually Joshua chapter 5 and verse number 14. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Then we kind of see that the line continues on through verse number 15. And the captain of the Lord's host saith unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. And we see that the next and final reference we're going to look at is page number 388 in the G4 marginal reference. Here on page 388, we get to Judges chapter 2. And we're still seeing that G4, God, Son, Jesus, marginal reference and we're going to see here in Judges 2, verse 1, And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. So as we get back here to this G4, God, Son, and Jesus marginal reference here at the beginning of the KJV Sword Study Bible, basically I just want everyone to realize, uh, obviously that was a lot of verses to cover, that we went through all 18 examples. Why do we do that? Why do we look at so many verses? It's to show the depth of this marginal reference system and the marginal study guide, which is the main feature of the KJV Sword Study Bible, that we went all the way from Genesis 1 all the way to Judges chapter 2, verses 1 through 3 on page 388 and see how that works and understand that 
we really only scratched the surface of this marginal reference system and the marginal study guide that again, there's a whole other page here uh, where it continues probably over a hundred verses here of just G4, uh, probably nearly 200 verses and examples of the theme, God, Son, and Jesus for G4. And if you paid attention to the verses that were read, it is very clear that the theme of those verses was God, Son, and Jesus. And we see continuity throughout the Bible, throughout the King James Version Bible. We see how the God of the Old Testament is also going to be the God of the New Testament and is Christ and that the Bible works together and it's beautiful. Another unique feature of the KJV Sword Study Bible is going to be the boxed text. We see that quotations of God's word by biblical speakers or angels are boxed with a red line. Here in the book of Matthew, we're going to see a really good example of that boxed text. And specifically, this is Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. It says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And there is that red box line around that verse, uh, which being interpreted is God with us. And we know in the blank space that Isaiah 7.14 is going to be a cross reference. I bet it'll have some significance with what is boxed in this text. So we turn to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, the cross reference of Matthew chapter 1 verse 23, that boxed text example. And here we go. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So once again, we know that the Lord is speaking. We know that the words there are read. That's red text, which also indicates that the Lord is speaking. But how cool is this that we're in Isaiah, which if you read in the introduction to Isaiah, uh, says that it was probably written around 740 B.C., and yet all the way 740 years later, when Matthew is writing about the account of Jesus' birth, that we see here, uh, this is the prophesying and then the fulfillment of that prophecy. Uh, how cool is that and how cool is the Bible? Uh, that's the significance of this box text and a great example of a prophesying uh, and a prophecy of the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah, that came true as we know it in the New Testament and as recounted in the book of Matthew. The main additional study feature of the KJV Sword Study Bible, both giant print and large print personal size editions, are going to be these articles. Here we are at the end of Malachi, which is the end of the Old Testament, and we see this section called Between the Testaments, 420 BC to AD, or the year of our Lord, and we're going to see this excellent essay on Between the Testaments, which talks about the Apocrypha, and talks about the Apocryphal period and those writings, and what was going on in between the Old and New Testaments. The bulk of the remaining articles and special sections of the KJV Sword Study Bible appear here at the back of the Bible, which you see here we're at Revelation, uh, so we've ended in the New Testament, and we see here this treasury of biblical information. So uh, we've got all of this information that was already the Bible, uh, special sections, and lots of introductory material, the Between the Testament section. Then we get to this treasury of biblical information, which it's an awful lot of stuff. And we're going to take a look at some of these articles and special sections. First one is how to interpret the Bible. Next, and certainly noteworthy, is a creationist defense of the King James Bible by Dr. Henry Morris of the Institute for Creation Research. Henry Morris is certainly a renowned theologian on the study of creation. Uh, you'll see that we also sell his KJV Henry Morris Study Bible, as well as several books that he has authored. Uh, he is certainly probably the fo foremost authority on creation and creation research. And here is an article from him in the back of this sword study Bible as a nice bonus. We also see excerpts from the divine inspiration of the Bible by Arthur W. Pink. In God's plan, men and women were called to serve him. A list of such individuals follows with appropriate headings suggested. And we see that Adam created, Eve created, Enoch was grace, Noah was grace. Uh, Going to see some examples here of some famous people throughout the Bible. Article on the land and the people of the Bible. An article on the chronology of the Bible. And of course, we understand that chronology is the science of dividing time into regular intervals and assigning dates to historic events in their proper order. The listing of the harmony of the Gospels. The miracles of our Lord, as well as the parables of our Lord. 
names and titles of Jesus Christ. So you get the Hebrew names for God in the beginning of the Bible, the Sword Study Bible, the introduction. And here at the back, you also get the names and titles of Christ. Last but certainly not least, we get to this gigantic topical concordance in the back of the Sword Study Bible. Uh, it's extremely thick. It's about 289 pages. That's one of the largest concordances you're going to find in any King James Version Bible, especially one that starts for under $50. Uh, really large concordance here at the back of the KJV Sword Study Bible. There are also about eight Bible maps here at the back of the KJV Sword Study Bible, uh, with this last one, of course, being Jerusalem in 66 AD. Additionally, the KJV Sword Study Bibles fit nicely in our genuine leather Bible covers from Lumen. And here we're going to see on the left, this is actually the Giant Prince Sword Bible. That's the black ultra soft that we put in there. Uh, and this is a size extra large. Uh, we're seeing here that we have a nice external zipper pocket. Um, you also have a Velcro pocket for some additional storage there. Um, this one, again, you're seeing here, that is fits books up to seven and a half by 10 and a half, genuine leather, and this is the extra large. I'm calling it ebony, of course we call it black. Um, has a nice carrying handle there, and again, fits the sword Bible very nicely. Um, really a nice fit. It's going to protect that investment. Um, on this Sword Bible large print personal size, this one is actually the medium size cover. The medium, we're calling that espresso or brown, um, and that's the genuine leather Bible cover. And again, exact same features as the larger version. Fits the Sword Bible uh, large print personal size pretty well. Um, not a lot of room just for it to slide around there. And the same feature, zipper pocket, zipper closure on the outside, uh, and then an additional Velcro pocket. Um, these are some great options to protect your investment on your KJV Sword Bible. The Sword Bible giant print also nicely fits our Lumen Genuine Leather Bible Organizer, which we're seeing here. This is the Burgundy Extra Large Edition. Uh, slight difference between it and, of course, the regular Genuine Leather Bible cover uh, is kind of the lack of one of those little zipper pockets that you see here on this Genuine Leather one. Um, really just has the main Velcro pocket there. But this one, the Bible Organizer, also does come with a free notepad and pen. Um, and again, that extra large size does seem to fit the Sword Bible giant print very well. Um, so, and again, last but not least, uh, we do also sell, if you wanted to just get the Genuine Leather Bible cover, we do also feature these Bible marking kits, which has the four highlighters, the ruler with the books of the Bible on it, and of course a Bible marking pen, uh, good for taking notes and writing in the margin of your Bible. So once again, KJV Sword Study Bible, the giant print edition here. This one is the Black Ultra Soft Edition. Uh, it's a very large, substantial Bible. Uh, with really large giant print font, a size 15 font. Of course, we also have the KJV Sword Study Bible Large Print Personal Size Edition, uh, much smaller, uh, more compact edition, but still has a very readable size 12 font. Uh, of course, don't forget that at the KJV store, uh, we can, of course, imprint your name on the cover. Um, the battle has gold page edges, so typically we would do the imprint there in gold to match those page edges. It would look really sharp on either one of these Bibles, the Black Ultra Soft or the Burgundy Genuine Leather. Uh, several other available styles uh, available as well on the KJVstore.com on our website. You see the ribbon markers there, the red to match the red of the, uh, the Burgundy there on the large print, and then the black to match the black of the Ultra Soft. Uh, so again, the KJV Sword Study Bible. Uh, very unique study Bible, uh, complete red letter edition, uh, marginal study system, and of course, available from the KJV store, the number one source for all things KJV, and we look forward to sending you one soon.